All right, so today we are talking tires and specifically we are talking the new Continental tires. I have been riding these for the past six months or so and they are oof, chef's kiss. So today we will run you through the three different tread patterns that we have as well as each different type of casing. Basically give you a product lineup on these new tires. We have the Argotol, Cryptotol, Zynotol. No, those are not prescriptions you need from a doctor. And at the end of this, we're gonna help you find the best tire for you. So let's dive in. All of the tires we're talking about today fall under the new Continental Gravity range. These aren't the old tires. These are completely redesigned. These are brand new in a new series designed for gravity fed riding. If you've been anywhere on the internet in the past year, you have probably seen people ranting and raving about these tires and they do have a good reason to do so. But today we're going to introduce you to the Gravity Range lineup. These tires are very different than any other Conti tire that I've ever ridden. And keep in mind, this is the gravity range. There are no XC tires. All of these are pretty grippy, pretty knobby, pretty aggressive. So in the world of tires, lineups get really convoluted, really confusing, and frankly, a little bit annoying to navigate. The new gravity range lineup is incredibly simple. We've got four tread patterns, three compounds, three casings. They're all available in all of them, except for the wet tire. That one's a little more limited. Otherwise, the sky is pretty much the limit in terms of combinations of tread pattern, compound, casing. The first consideration you should make when picking a new tire is tread pattern. So that's where we're gonna start. And your tread pattern is going to be determined by the terrain and the conditions of where you ride. So in order of ascending aggressiveness, we've got the Zynotol, the Cryptotol, the Argotol, and the Hydrotol. And I will do my best to give you comparisons in other well-known brands. The comparisons are not perfect because it's not always apples to apples, but I'll do my best. Don't judge me. First up, we've got the Zynatol. This is similar to a Maxxis Dissector or a Schwalbe Hans Dampf. So looking at the tread pattern here, this tire is best suited for dry conditions and hard packed terrain. It has the least aggressive tread profile and knobs out of all of these tires. You can also see that the center tread is fairly ramped, giving you better rolling resistance characteristics. And because this center tread makes so much contact with the ground, makes it a great hard conditions tire. Uh, it ended up being my favorite Southern Utah desert tire. It grips on slick rock very well. Next up, we have the Crypto Tall, which is closest to a Maxxis Minion or a Schwalbe Big Betty. And this does come in a front and rear specific tread pattern, and they do vary slightly. Both of them take a pretty significant jump in terms of aggressiveness in the tread as well as spacing in the tread. So it does start to handle loose conditions a little bit better as well as wet conditions. So starting with the rear tread pattern here, it has a little tighter packed center tread than the front and a little bit lower profile uh, side knobs as well as center knobs. And that's designed to help with rolling resistance, but it strikes a nice balance between rolling resistance characteristics and braking traction. Now looking here at the Cryptotal front, this has a little bit more space between those center treads and the side lugs are just a little bit taller in profile, a little bit more aggressive, gives you better traction, better cornering characteristics. And this tire does really up the ante when it comes to loose terrain, whether that's loose and dry or loose and wet, it starts to get a bit better. And last up, we have the Argotol, which is the most aggressive tire in the uh, dry tire side of things. It has the most space between those lugs as well as the most aggressive and tallest tread. It helps it dig in and bite in loose terrain quite a bit better. It is a little bit slower rolling, but that's the price you pay for traction. And the last tread pattern is the Hydrotol, which I live in Utah, it is drier than a low sodium Triscuit. We don't really ride in the mud, so it didn't make sense for me to get this tire and ride it and test it on my home trails. It would have been a fish out of water, like literally. Quick side note on tire sizes. So all of these come in 29 and 27 and a half inch diameters, and they all come in a 2.4 inch width. If you want wider, you can get a 2.6 inch width, but not in all the compounds or tread patterns, and that's fine. 
because 2.4 is the correct tire size anyway. So the next consideration you're gonna to wanna to make is your compound and your casing. And this is more determined by the style of riding you like to do. As far as casings go, we have three different options and these are trail, enduro, and downhill. The trail casing is the lightest and thinnest casing in the lineup. It is a single ply carcass with the least amount of pinch flat and sidewall tear protection. It has three layers of material underneath the tread as well as two layers on the sidewalls. The enduro casing here takes it a step up from the trail casing. It's still a single ply carcass. It still has two layers of sidewall protection and three layers of material underneath the tread, but it does have an apex layer around the bead, which is going to help with supporting the tire in the corners as well as pinch flat protection. The downhill casing here is the biggest, burliest, most aggressive in the lineup. It has four layers of material in the sidewalls and six underneath the tread, as well as the apex layer for cornering support and pinch flat protection. Be warned, those downhill casings are extremely difficult to put on a wheel. Uh, it might induce crying. So apart from determining the casing you should ride, your riding style will also determine the compound that you should ride. And like I said earlier, we have three different compounds. We have super soft, soft, and endurance. And those vary in levels of hardness and wearability and rolling resistance. The endurance compound is the hardest rubber compound in this lineup. It has the best rolling resistance characteristics and it's also going to last the longest at the expense of grippiness. The super soft compound is the other end of that spectrum. It is the softest rubber, meaning it also has the most grip at the expense of durability. It's going to wear out quicker and it will provide more rolling resistance. You can definitely hear that when you're pedaling on pavement. And the soft compound falls somewhere in between those two with a nice balance between rolling resistance characteristics and grippiness. One of my favorite things about the gravity range is that all of these tread pounds are available in all of these casings and most of the compounds, which makes it very easy for you to find the right tire because now you just run down this list. Where do I like to ride? What are those conditions? How do I like to ride? And you can pick a tire accordingly. In a lot of other manufacturers, that would be difficult because the trail casing doesn't come in the aggressive tread pattern or the aggressive tread pattern doesn't come in the lightweight casing. For example, on my Santa Cruz 5010, I'm running the more trail tread patterns, but in downhill casings, because that bike lets you hit rocks fast and hard. And that way I've got the pinch flat protection that I want with the rolling resistance and the tread pattern that I want. Pretty tricky to do in other tire lineups. After way too many tire swaps, broken levers, sealant explosions, cuss words, I now have some pretty thorough thoughts on all of these tires and how they perform out on the trail. I will be very blunt here. The Continental Gravity Range is the first set of tires that does not make me miss riding Maxxis. I have ridden a ton of other tires in the past and I always end up going back to the big yellow M. But after riding this new Conti stuff, I like the rubber more, I like the casings and the options more, and I think the tread patterns are perfectly aligned with their intended applications. So I will break down my ride impressions by tread pattern. So I rode the Zynatal on both a Santa Cruz 5010 and a Giant Trance X. Both of those bikes fall in the trail category with 130 and 135 millimeters of travel respectively. While I feel like the Zynatal is slightly aggressive for the more XC nature of the Trans X, it was perfect on the 5010. It suits a more aggressive trail bike better than one that wants to pedal and pretend it's an XC bike. The Zynatal is my preferred rear tire for desert hard pack. It provides a lot of surface area for riding sandstone and that kind of loose over hard terrain. The rolling resistance characteristics are very good. It spins up quickly but being a gravity focused tire, it's not going to be the top choice for a Lycra rider. Next up, I rode the Cryptotal both front and rear on the widest variety of bikes. I rode it on the SB140, the Santa Cruz 5010, Santa Cruz Mega Tower, SB160, or Bay of Wild. I rode it on a lot, and that's because it's the most versatile tire in the lineup. It was slightly overkill on the 5010, but not by nearly as much as I would have guessed. It still doesn't make the bike feel sluggish and heavy and slow. It was an excellent setup for front and rear tires 
on the SB140 it, because it matched that aggressive all-mountain riding style very well. I ran it as a rear tire on the bigger enduro bikes and it was perfect for that application. It hooks up well on the corners, brakes well, uh, rolls decently enough, and it was never a reason to ride slower or more timidly and it, it didn't hold me back. It performed the best in dry and damp conditions not being amazing in the wet, especially on wet routes, but name a tire that is good on wet routes. So the Argotol I ran on the bigger enduro bikes like the SB160, the Mega Tower. I also ran it on the SB140 and it did add a pretty good degree of capability to that bike. It hooks up very well in loose conditions and handles wet terrain fairly well. It does not roll quickly and I would not want to run it as a rear tire. In my mind, it's a front. Couple of quick notes on the different casings and compounds. Surprisingly, I ended up preferring the downhill casing uh, in every application across the board, every tread pattern and every bike I ended up riding them on. I like how it feels in the corners with really good sidewall support, it lets me run lower air pressures at around 26, 27 PSI, and it offers great flat protection. I have yet to have a flat on one, and you should watch this clip because if you listen to that sound, I definitely should have flatted. It allows me to not run a tire insert where on the lighter weight tires I'd probably have to and then that kind of negates the weight savings. I may as well just run the downhill casing and get the cut protection as well. And to my liking, the downhill casing is slightly lighter and a little more pliable than like a Maxxis downhill casings. Going off of the weight chart, it's a couple hundred grams lighter and it also rides a little bit softer. You can feel the difference out on the trail. So here is my preferred riding setup. I'll break it down by types of bikes, trail, all mountain, enduro. So for the trail bike, I want a Cryptotal front in a downhill casing and a super soft compound. On the rear tire, I want a Zynotal downhill casing soft compound. In my all mountain setup, I want a Cryptotal front in a downhill casing super soft compound. On the rear, Cryptotal rear with a downhill casing and a soft compound. And on my big enduro bike, I want an Argotol front in a downhill super soft. And on the back, I want a Cryptotal rear downhill and super soft. Overall, these are some of my favorite tires to date. And the proof is that uh, they are on all of my personal bikes here in my garage. In fact, I've taken off perfectly good tires from other brands just to put a new Continental on. And I've even suffered through putting on a lot of downhill casing tires because I like the tires so much. Anyway, that's going to do it. Thanks for sticking around. We'll see you next time.